And welcome back to Big Movie Mouth Off. We're still here at Brewery Cinema Pub, our hosts and sponsors this week, reviewing more movies. I'm Jeff Weiss with MSN Entertainment. And I'm Jimmy Martin with Slug Magazine. You can find Big Movie Mouth Off on Xfinity Channel 6, also on their on-demand system, uh, Utah On Demand, Salt Lake Alternative. Just tons of movies waiting right there for you. New, old, you know, maybe you missed something. It's still sitting there for you. Mm -hmm. or, so watch it. Yeah, or things currently in theaters. Uh, <laughs> this week we're reviewing Life of Pi, based on the best-selling novel by Yann Martel. Um, this film actually had very interesting starts to it. <laughs> Yet they've been trying to make it since the book first came out in 2001 or 2002. At one point, M. Night Shyam Shyamalan was attached to direct it, as well as Jean Genet. Ah. Had, had a different version, but the one that finally made it to the screen is, well, it's our little crouching tiger hidden dragon friend, Ang Lee, Aww. who finally gets to put this on the screen with a script written by the uh, screenwriter of Finding Neverland. Ooh, yeah. uh, Sort of follows the structure of the book. Uh, it, in this version, Yan Martel uh, is a character having the story, interesting story of an Indian, Pai Patel, tell him of his incredible <laughs> adventures, including being uh, orphaned, shipwrecked, with nothing for companionship but a Bengal tiger. <laughs> When I heard about this uh, film, I, I, I kind of kept it to a minimum of what I knew about it going into right. it. Until when I was re when I realized, really, his his raft mate is a is a tiger, and at some point a zebra and a and a and an orangutan, orangutan. You know, and a hyena. You know, you know, like it's a little zoo on his boat. What they call it? What do they call it? Pie's Ark, which I even thought was even funnier. But uh, gosh, I mean, they really do make you believe that you could survive on a raft with a tiger. A absolutely. <laughs> at, at times, he builds his own little raft. Oh, yeah, just because, stay away. <laughs> because sharing space with a tiger, hungry tiger, is sometimes not the best of circumstances. They, they get a little territorial. Yeah, hyenas aren't so good either. Yeah. However, you, sometimes you may have an orangutan to slap them back. Yeah. Right? Well, you know what? And you said it's an Ang Lee film. And from what, you know, I think we've all learned from Ang Lee films, gosh, they're pretty to look at. Yes, they are. And this is This is his most visually pleasing film absolutely since crouching tiger i mean dragon and possibly even more than that from everything from just gorgeous you know sunrises over the ocean to a a moon a moonlit a moonlit ocean but i was going to say even to a terrifying shipwreck scene right that i i mean my fists were clinched there in that scene and there's a there's a shot where pie is underwater and like the camera's behind him and the ship's just sinking and everything's underwater and I was like, James Cameron wishes he had that in Titanic. Yeah, I, here's part of it. There were times I was wondering to myself, I don't know how they did that shot. I, I have no idea. Right? You know, I, I know some techniques, Be Because but they no. flip perspectives. It's just amazing. Yes. It is, by the way, it's, it's playing in a lot of screens in 3D. It's also playing in 2D. This is one of the rare times I might suggest that you see a film in 3D. I will agree with that. Yes. And, and uh, I'm in, not a big in, fan of 3D by in, any means. In particular, because of those water scenes. The, and there's, there's some scenes where, I mean, no joke, I was sitting there watching it and it caught me by surprise because most 3D, I don't, I don't, I almost want to say I don't see it. Right. But this time, I'm like, those fish look like they're outside of the screen. I was kind of losing my mind a little bit. <laughs> right. And so, yes, if, I think if a film is shot, you know, shot for 3D and shot in 3D, it can work. It doesn't make it automatically okay. No. F but f flying sequences and water sequences, in, yeah. in, in particular, of, of outer space scenes, obviously, too. But those seem to fall in the right purview of, yeah. of 3D. It uh, starts to get into a little trouble towards the end. I think the last 20 minutes. 
And yes. and I don't want to ruin anything because there's some little twists and turns, you know, here right. and there, uh, which Starts makes me feel, laugh. What? Starts to feel a little prolonged and a little rushed. Yeah, well, it, it, it's too bad that it feels a rush because I would have almost cut off the last 15 and just kind of ended it. And it, I would have been fine with it because it almost feels like you got to the finish line and, and instead of taking that last step, you sit there and, and kind of jog in place for a little bit. Uh, I, and that's where I'm like, just finish it. Like, let's, let's you know, because it was a great journey. It, absolutely. And the thing about it is it's a smart, smart movie in a lot of ways. It, the way it discusses God and religion mm -hmm. and man's relationship to the cosmos, mm -hmm. as well as uh, the meaning of loss. And yet in the last 15 minutes, the film feels the need to explain itself. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, and that's the point where, yeah, I think it starts to tread water a little bit. Um, but great characters in the sense, right. I mean, I, I love this, you kind of learn uh, about Pi's life growing up, uh, I said it before, where his name was actually Pissing, which it yeah. gets a great name for a kid in school, let me tell you. And, uh, it's, but, it's French. Yeah. And he's the, and he's the, named after a swimming pool. Right? And a, a kid who uh, is so enamored with religion that he actually follows, uh, was it uh, Muslim, <laughs> Hindu, Hinduism, and, and, and Christianity. Christianity. <laughs> I mean, and, and wholeheartedly follows all three of them. And his parents are like, you can't do that. And he's like, why not? You know, uh, and that's what's fun. I, I think it's a great buildup. The, the, the story at sea is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. It's just that last little bit, which yeah. doesn't hinder the film. No, 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 no. But it's and just, it's just yeah, you want to just yeah. push it over the edge and yes. go, go. <laughs> I, and I have some problems with wraparound explanatory sequences mm -hmm. too and and this does have this though though it is sort of in following with the theme of, of the book itself mm -hmm. but those are also almost unnecessary and and, and, and could have been proved they're, as well they're unnecessary in the sense for me because when someone says i went on this incredible adventure let me tell you about it and when there's such peril in that adventure yeah. as he's telling the story you know he's okay yeah. and that kind of ruins it a little bit i mean right. you know that's just storytelling that some people love that angle of it but for me, I'd rather I'd rather feel the danger, knowing that God, he, this tiger might rip him apart and throw him out for chum. Yes. <laughs> so, little problems here and there, but for me, three and a half, wholeheartedly, uh, angly. Like you said, it's I think it's a, it's visually stunning. Yeah, I and and I'm happy because after some stumbles after Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, this is the angly that we had sort of gotten used to. That we loved. Yeah, a lot more confident. I'm a little below you. I, again, it gets a little pokey for my for my taste and, and a little too much of the voiceover narration and mm -hmm. the wraparound sequences. Three stars, but a solid three stars. And again, even if you don't like 3D, you might want to consider it here. Yeah, and, and, and this is, uh, a, again, a film. We are now in award season, and this one will surely show up for some awards. If it does not show up for best visual effects it has and to be cinematography, yeah. then they are doing then a, I grave quit. Mis <laughs> a grave, grave misjustice. <laughs> All right, well, that's going to do it again for another episode of Big Movie Mouth Off. So, like we said, go check out The Life of Pi, uh, opening pretty soon, I would say. November and, 21st. Ooh, there you go. And uh, we will catch you next time. See you then. Yeah.